COVID-19. Have you ever wondered what the 19 stood for? Well, don't worry. I've got you covered. I've been meeting with some friends who I haven't seen since 2020. Some of them have had the virus. Others of them haven't. But I realize they seem to all have one thing in common. They all seem to have gained 19 pounds. COVID-19. Well, either that or the fact that they discovered it in 2019. I'll let you be the judge of that. But I learned a lot during the pandemic. I learned a lot during shelter in place. I learned about viruses. I learned about politics. I learned about the legal system. And with the fires in California, I learned about the air quality index. But most of all, I learned about myself. I learned about fear. I learned about anxiety. I learned about isolation. I learned about burnout. You see, prior to the pandemic, I was always tired and busy. Everyone I talked to was tired and busy. And we assumed that the tiredness was a result of the busyness. But during shelter in place, some people got laid off. Some people didn't have the one hour commute, so they were less busy. Some people didn't have to take their kids to soccer practice or piano practice, so they were less busy, but yet they were just as tired, if not more tired. My name is Michael Leiden, and for the past two years, I've been teaching a class on mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And I want to talk to you about a lifestyle of rest. You see, we can get rest, we can get physical rest, we can get sleep, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be refreshed and revitalized. I just came back from a one-week vacation, and I'm tired. I need a vacation from the vacation. Has that ever happened to you? Physical rest doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be refreshed. And vacations don't work. We work, 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 run, 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 and figure, okay, then I'll take some time and refresh and think a little bit of time is going to refresh us. A better solution is to introduce rest into your daily schedule, into your daily life, and therefore creating a lifestyle of rest. I want to talk to you about three types of rest. Physical rest, mental rest, and emotional rest. Physical rest. Have you ever woken up on the couch watching TV and then all of a sudden you're waking up? Have you woken up while you're driving? Scary, isn't it? That's signs that you need physical rest. When you need physical rest, when you haven't gotten enough sleep, that can lead to being overweight. It can lead to heart issues. It can weaken your immune system. So some solutions how you can get physical rest are sleep from seven to nine hours per night. Or get a massage, it gives you physical rest. Or another solution is a concept called body fluidity. You don't sit stagnant at your desk all day in the same position for four hours or eight hours. You can set an alarm every 90 minutes to two hours to remind yourself to get up and walk around. Or you could drink a lot of water, forcing yourself to get up and go to the bathroom. If you're staring at the computer screen all day, you can try to focus on something far or look outside of a window to rest your eyes. If you have pains in your neck, you can get up and walk around when you feel it. So you don't dress, address the pain at the end of the day, you address it immediately as you get it, therefore giving you physical rest and therefore introducing a lifestyle of rest. Now I'll talk about mental rest. Have you ever walked into a room and forgot why you went into it? A story I remember is I was interviewing a candidate for my department. He was a college student. He was in the middle of finals. The interview went well. At the end of the interview, I was having him jot down some dates and he asked me to hold on so he can get his calendar. So I was hurt holding on for a while. I heard him scuffling around. Then I thought to ask him, are you looking for your cell phone? Yeah, yeah, it should be just a minute. I'll, I'll be able to find it. It's around here somewhere. It wouldn't happen to be in your hand up against your ear, would it? <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, he had been studying so much and not getting any sleep. He was mentally exhausted. He needed physical, he needed mental rest. Some ways to get mental rest include 
jotting your notes down. If you have thoughts that are constantly running around in your head and racing in your head, you can jot them down in a notebook. That way, it gets them out of your head and your brain doesn't think that it has to remind you. Another way to get mental rest is to create systems or put structures in place. A good example of that is Steve Jobs. Many of you know that Steve Jobs is famous for giving presentations. He always wears the same outfit. He always has blue jeans and a black turtleneck. Same outfit. Mark Zuckerberg is known for wearing blue jeans and a gray t-shirt all day, all the time. Albert Einstein is famous for wearing one of three gray suits. You see, what these people have in common is that they don't want to waste their mental capacity on making small, mundane decisions. They want to save their mental power for the big decisions. So you can put systems and structures into place, therefore giving yourself mental rest and helping you create a lifestyle of rest. Next, I want to talk about emotional rest. A while back, my mother had had a stroke and she couldn't move the right side of her body. It was pretty emotional. So we ended up getting her a live-in caregiver and that began to get really expensive. It started to drain, I had to go into my savings. And then I got laid off, adding to the issue. Since I had time, I figured I'd try to take care of myself, and I went to the doctor. The doctor told me that my blood sugar was 500, and they wouldn't let me out of the hospital until it got down to 300. I was in the emergency room. This was extremely stressful, extremely emotional. So I was emotionally exhausted. Some ways you can cure emotional exhaustion. Number one is to sit in solitude and quiet. Another is meditation or do some breathing. Another method that Christians have is called quiet time. We set up 15 minutes or maybe an hour or some set amount of time every day where you spend time with God in prayer, reading the Bible, or listening to spiritual music. So introduce one of these practices into your life, therefore giving you emotional rest and giving you a lifestyle of rest. So we've learned about physical rest, mental rest, and emotional rest. We've learned about body fluidity. We've learned about setting up systems and structures to give you rest. And we've learned about meditation and quiet time. These can introduce you to a lifestyle of rest. If you want more information about a lifestyle of rest, you can go to restquiz.com. And it'll tell you about the seven types of rest that there are. You, I only talked about three, but it'll tell you which type of rest you need. So you can go to restquiz.com and find that out. Or read the book Sacred Rest by Sandra Dalton Smith. And I want to leave you with this. The U.S. military actually trains their soldiers how to sleep. They train their soldiers how to sleep. Why would they do that? Because they may be fighting a battle for three days, for seven days. You can't just say, I'm gonna fight, fight, fight for seven days and then I'll sleep. Sometime in there you have to sleep. So they teach them how to get an hour of sleep here and there even though there's a battle going on, even though there are bullets going overhead and there's chaos going on, how can they sleep? So the military realizes that sleep isn't a luxury. Getting rest is actually a military tool that needs to be trained. So we need to realize the same thing. Rest isn't a luxury. Rest isn't something that you earn or deserve after you finish your to-do list. Rest is something that you need to prioritize and put into your to-do list and therefore giving you a lifestyle of rest.